the series of dimensionless numbers, we will study the Frode number. So we encounter this Frode number in fluid flow calculations. Let's start with the formula, which is the Frode number is equal to the inertial force to the gravitational force, which comes as V upon under root of GL, where V is the velocity or the average flow velocity. G is the acceleration due to gravity. And finally, L is the depth. Okay. So, and we encounter this Frode number in the open channel flow systems like river, oceans or sewage system. Okay. So, before we go in more details about what is the significance of the values of the Frode number and what is the physical significance of this whole Frode number, we will try to learn this inertial force. We have encountered it many occasions. Let's understand how it will influence in the fluid dynamics. So, when we look into any flow system, Let's consider there is a fluid element within the flow system. So that specific flow element encounters lot of forces like the forces, which is the gravitational force. Gravitational force is because of the weight of the fluid element. Second is the viscous force because of the shear stress between the layers of the fluid. Third one is the pressure force due to the difference of pressure in a flow. Surface tension force. This is due to the capillary action. So it exists because of the interface between the two fluids. Okay. Then we have the elastic force and this is because of the compressible flow. So it arises due to the change in the volume of the fluid of the element. So all these forces, this fluid element encounter or face all type of forces within the flow system. And when we do the summation of all the forces, there is a force known as the resultant force arise from all these five forces. So now where is this inertial force? So inertial force is equal to the negative of resultant force. Okay. All these forces will try to move this fluid element, try to give the acceleration to the element, but the inertial that is the inertia, it is a tendency of the fluid element to resist the motion, right? To, to resist any change. So it will always act in the opposite direction to the resultant force. And according to Newton's second law of motion, it will be equal to mass of the fluid element into acceleration. So this is the force, inertial force that the fluid element experiences. Now, theoretically, like I mentioned before, inertia is a measurement of the object's resistance to change in motion. So this inertia is more in heavy objects. Okay. And these heavy objects are difficult to set in motion because of more inertia. And if they are in motion, they are difficult to stop it also. On the other side, if we are dealing with the lighter objects, they have less inertia and they are easy to set in motion and easy to stop. So now we have understood this inertial force and we already know about the gravitational force. Gravitational force is obviously the weight of the fluid element. So this is also equal to the velocity of the flow to the velocity of wave. Let's take an example, ocean. Okay. In the ocean, we on the top of the surface, we have the waves. Okay. And these waves arise because of the gravitational force below the waves. We have the rest of the ocean, which is flowing as a channel. Okay. And this flow is because of the tectonic plate movements or the aquatic life, climatic conditions, seawater level. Okay. So all these parameters result in the flow of water within the ocean. So that's what happened in the ocean. So we have the waves and we have the rest of the ocean. Okay. So, now this Frode number is equal to the velocity of the flow, the flow of the rest of the ocean because of the inertial forces and the velocity of the wave is because of the gravitational force. This is the ratio of the Frode number. Now, when the Frode number is equal to one, we define it as a critical flow. It means the water that is flowing in the ocean and the waves that are on the top of the surface, they have the same velocity. On the other side, when the Frode number goes less than one, there is a subcritical flow, which means the waves that are forming on the ocean moves faster than the water flow. Okay. And we face these type of situations when we are in the, when you are in the middle of the ocean at that time, you see this uh, subcritical flow. So means it means the waves are very slow and stable. So when the Frode number exceeds the value of one, we observe the supercritical flow which means now the waves are moving slower and the rest of the ocean is moving faster. Okay. And we observe this supercritical flow in the shallow water, like near the shore of the ocean. 
okay and at that time the waves are very like unstable complete turbulent behavior will be there and they are very rapid also okay so this is the condition like frode number is equal to 1 then is a critical flow both have the same velocity rest of the ocean will have the same velocity and the waves will also have the same velocity when less it is less than 1 then the waves are moving faster than the rest of the ocean and when n is greater than 1 so ocean is moving faster than the waves okay because of which the waves will create dif show different behavior so now the question arises why the frode number is going less than 1 i mean inertial force is a summation of pressure force gravitational force viscous force surface tension force and elastic force right inertial force is a summation of more than gravitational force so why it is going less than 1 right so the answer is simple we already know that force is a vector quantity okay it is it can happen like the force is acting in the x direction and the viscous force is acting in the minus x direction they may cancel out each other also so inertial force is a summation of the vector forces so it can go less than 1 also so that's why the frode number can go less than 1 can go more than 1 okay it all decided like how the forces are applicable on that specific fluid element now moving forward so we have seen other dimensionless numbers also because we know inertial force is a summation of five forces so reynolds number is the inertial force to the viscous force then we have already studied the frode number as the ratio of the inertial force to the gravitational force third one is the mach number which is the ratio of inertial force to the elastic force fourth one is the weber number which is the ratio of inertial force to the surface tension force changing the forces will change the application they will be helpful in different application scenarios so when you are discussing about open channel system you are talking about the frode number so on that basis we design our ships also like uh, the travel ships or naval ships we design those ships okay and that's these are all decided on the basis of the frode number so after all these things let's come to the physical significance of the frode number so we understood like frode number is the ratio of the inertial force to the gravitational force and the velocity of the waves and the velocity of the rest of the ocean body will decide what will be the value of the frode number so frode number is discussed in the open channel systems where we understand the influence of inertial and the gravitational forces which one will dominate on that basis what will be the behavior of the flow okay and we use this dimensionless number in in the calculations of hydraulic pump ship hydrodynamics wind engineering sewer pipes so while we design all those things we use this frode number to do the calculations third comes is the subcritical condition so now like i mentioned before subcritical means the velocity of the waves is more rather than the rest of the ocean okay so the gravitational force will dominate if you look at the formula gravity because subcritical means the frode number is less than 1 which means the velocity of the waves is more than the velocity of the rest of the ocean which means the gravitational force will dominate and because of all these things the waves that are generated they will move towards the upstream direction whereas if we talk about the supercritical fluid in that case the frode number is more than 1 which means the rest of the ocean is moving with more speed rather than the speed of the waves so because of which the inertial force will dominate and which in results cause the waves that are forming on the ocean will move in the downstream direction and finally comes the where where we see this subcritical and supercritical flow so subcritical flow is generally seen in the deep water ocean why because when if you look at the formula frode number is equal to v upon under root of lg l is the depth of the ocean the more will be the depth of the ocean the lesser will be the frode number and more will be the subcritical flow on the other hand when you are at the shore of the ocean or the rivers you will see heavy waves okay and at that time the well the water is shallow because of which it will show the supercritical flow behavior okay so these are the five physical significances that we understand on the basis of the formula and the applications so that's it guys that's it for this video and we have already uploaded a rest of the dimensionless numbers 
so you can go through it and if you like the content so like this video share this video and let us know your comments if you have any doubts that's it good luck guys and see you soon in the next video